Senate President Nick Scatari, thanks for joining us. I guess the question that most people around the State House would have is how would a Nick Scatari Senate presidency differ from a Steve Sweeney Senate presidency? Can you answer that? Well, he's a lot taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see how that's different. Obviously, there's a lot of great things that Steve Sweeney did as Senate president. He was an excellent leader. He had the opportunity to lead the upper house for 12 years, the longest in the history. So if I could do half as good as him, I would feel honored. But uh, I think we're going to try to do more is less, uh, less is more, uh, a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical on our legislation, taking our time to vet things properly, giving members of our uh, caucus as well as stakeholders a real opportunity to uh, weigh in on important pieces of legislation, and then increasing our messaging and make sure that the message that we want to deliver to folks is actually received. When we do lots and lots of stuff all at the same time, sometimes things get lost in the translation. What's your top priority going forward? Well, I think the top priority for the state and for our caucus is affordability in New Jersey. Obviously, people have been wrestling with affordability problems, property taxes, uh, wages. Those are some of the things that we'd like to be able to address first and foremost. And doing that in a bipartisan manner. If you look, our, our first real board list has come out on Monday. We only have eight bills on our agenda and four of them are sponsored by Republicans. So I've never said that I've cornered the market on good ideas. Wherever those good ideas come from, we'll embrace them. And if they're right for the people in New Jersey, we'll help, we'll help them get passed. Your Republican counterpart, Steve Orojo, wants to give the gross receipts tax that the state has been siphoning off for years <clears throat> back to municipalities about a billion dollars a year uh, to hold down property taxes. Does that seem like a good idea? Well, I, it, we'd have to delve into that a little bit more carefully because if you take that off of the state budget coffers and, and we don't have any way to replace it, that might be problematic for the executive branch, but I'm certainly willing to talk about that. We've talked about doing that with some of the energy receipts uh, and, uh, and things alike. And we've already passed a bill uh, similar to that, not quite as large as what Senator Orho is talking about, but yeah, stabilization. You have a couple of nominations that are high profile that you, you're looking to confirm. <clears throat> Rachel Wayner after for the state Supreme Court, uh, Matt Platkin to be the new attorney general. Are you going to try to get those done? Well, uh, they have to go through the process just like anyone else, uh, both of those individuals. I, I know more about Mr. Plack than I do a, about Ms. Uh, Apter, but uh, based upon his, his skills that he exhibited during his period of time with the governor's office, and I think he's grown a lot since that time and helped steer us through the pandemic that no one had ever seen before, uh, I, I, I think he's, uh, he may be ready for the job. We just have to go through the process. Well, we'll be watching you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Michael.